So, the year is 1881. The city, London, that vast and sprawling metropolis that lies along the banks of the River Thames. And tonight, a thick mist is rising up from that river, mingling with the smoke from all the many chimneys of both homes and factories that litter the city. And it creates this thick, soupy fog, known as the pea super or the London particular, this choking thick fog. It fills the streets, dimming the glow of the gas lights and hiding passers-by from view. And this thick fog presses up against the windows of a respectable house in Mayfair. Number 18, Grosvenor Square, where tonight the wealthy collector, Sir John Wallace, is hosting a little soiree in honour of his, his grandniece, uh, Miss Carter, who has relatively recently come over from America and the guests have sort of arrived they've been milling around in the in the boudoir in the in the in the salon on the upstairs um and Sir John's sort of making his way moving around between them and he's he was in his youth a very sort of active adventurous man he's traveled around the world he has served in various parts of the world and worked abroad in Malta and been exploring in Egypt, but now he's he's pushing 80, he's getting old, and he stoops over, leans heavily on a cane as he is guiding uh, Maddie, his grandniece, around the party, introducing her to the various academics, socialites, and other people who seem to have drifted into this party, as he points them out. Ugh. No. If I'm being honest, Maddie dear, I don't remember who half these people are. I swear I didn't invite them. But, ah, uh, hmm. Oh, God. I keep Queensbury here. I can't stand that man. It's... Uncle, it's fine. Oh. It's fine. Oh. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Albanathi, my lawyer? You met him? I, I, I didn't, believe I... he been here before but yes yeah i'll introduce you properly later um obviously you know all the museum people already uh mm -hmm. yeah yeah you're familiar you're familiar with them uh let's see who else is here worth uh worth talking to uh hmm. uh have you have i introduced you to uh lady irene yet no no i don't talk? believe you have oh, brilliant i'll, I'll uh, take you over now she's a most talented medium. Ah, excellent. Mm. Just real connection to the other side she has. Just an incredible connection. Ah, and Perhaps we should we should see about hosting a seance soon. Great minds think alike. Ah, Lady Irene. Lady Irene. Ah. Oh, hello. Ah. It's been uh, a while. Too long. Too long. I hope you're enjoying this evening. <laughs> so ah. far. Good, so far. Good. Good. Um, may I introduce you? Uh, my uh, grandniece, uh, Miss Miss Martha Carter, over from America. Oh, hi. Uh, Pleasure to meet you. Uh, Maddie, this is uh, Lady Irene Von Watts. <laughs> yes. You look lovely tonight. Thank you. So do you. Yeah. And for the benefit of our audience, what do Maddie and Lady Irene look like? The Maddie is a 20-year-old spinster, i.e. not married. Uh, she is pretty much looking like what I look like, a little on the plump side. Um, pretty pale because she spends most of her time indoors. Uh, average height, brown hair. Lady Irene is of a more slender build, um, pale skin, brown hair pinned up. Uh, she is wearing a lovely black dress with a red shawl 
around her shoulders. Um, her features are very um, fair. That would be a good way to put it. Um, I'm trying to say she's very attractive without trying to say that she's <laughs> very attractive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she's just very friendly and she has this, it's weird because she has this very positive look on her face, but there is something that can almost be seen as her eyes darting slightly about this and that. And there seems to be a smell of morning glories around her. I must say, you look beautiful as ever, Irene. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. Uh, where are you, young man? No. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, ladies, I must just leave you two for a moment. I've just... Poor Cecil's been cornered by Queensbury, and I must I must rescue the poor lad before he gets dragged into a boxing match or something again. Yes, yes. rescue man. him yes. once yes. more uh, into the breach, care. right? Uh, don't, indeed. Don't rush too quickly. Uh, you worry too much, dear. Okay. <laughs> he sort of heads off through the crowd, leaving you two um, alone or as alone as people can be, and at a rather busy uh, party. So My uncle's told me that you're a medium. Indeed. I'm rather quite good at it. The spirits just seem to want to talk to me. And I'm just keeping a keen ear to listen. That must be quite fascinating. Um, have you had, held the seance here before? I don't think I've held one here, but your your uncle definitely has um, come to several salons where I have done so. Uh, well, we might be thinking about hosting one. Cool. Uh, when he mentioned, I, I suggested it. So perhaps a little later, we'll, we'll be able to plan one. Oh, I would love to do that. Uh, this house does seem to beam with, uh, trying to describe it, it, it feels like there is tension. There's something oh, this, here that needs to get out. This is an old house and filled with many old items, and so they must have some connection. There must be. And you're from America, right? Yes. So, um, yes. what are you doing? Uh, I'm just curious. I... Uh, well, I am visiting, staying, maybe possibly just to be a companion to m my great uncle. Oh. Um, I do assist at the uh, museum periodically. Oh, that, that is so fascinating. Maybe sometime you could give me a tour. I'd love to get some more in information from, you know, all oh, the curiosity will, at the museum. That will be perhaps very soon, actually. I, I will um, have to speak with one of the, the curator and his wife to see if we can uh, assemble, set that up. I would definitely love to do that. And uh, is there keeper um has lottie shown up well wow, that's she... what i was just going to ask um lottie oh i don't know if we should be calling you lottie this evening uh, uh have you arrived at this dinner party and if so under sort of what appearance what guys are you blending into this this crowd yes um lottie has gone ahead and um Worn her kind of typical outfit. She's she's a slender um, build woman. She typically is wearing blues, some kind of fine vest or shirt, um, with a silken kind of ascot type scarf around her neck. Um, hair always pinned up in a tight bun, with um, a couple tendrils in the front. Um, finely kept. She usually wears makeup just for appearances. Um, and today she has a formal long um, jacket on as well for the party. And she's standing just outside. Uh, she has not quite been invited, but 
she thinks that she should be allowed in, so she is working her way in. Uh, excuse me, miss? The, oh, the, the footman at the door sort of steps forwards as you um, walk up the steps of the house. Uh, are you are you a guest? Oh, yes, of course. Um, what, what is your name, miss, if I may ask? Um, I'm a detective, actually. Uh, detective Lottie Shaw. Oh, um, a detective? Yes. Uh, not here on business, I hope, ma'am. No, no, this is entirely a casual visit. Um, and uh, you're... You have an invitation, I presume? Yes. Well, how else would I know there's a party going on? And as you sort of do this, I think I think I should test this with a bit of a roll. Just let's make sure rolls work. And I think this to me sounds like a bit of a fast talk you're trying to pull here. Sure. Unless you would all like to opt for anything else. Um let's see i could see yeah, fast. a fast, fast talk's quite fine yeah. and we're doing the green dice yes we are Great. so we are for those of you doing this, we are running this through roll 20 so uh let's see okay so off the bat he doesn't seem wholly convinced by your story here he sort of looks you up and down and you can tell he's not quite buying that you've been invited in now you've got a couple of options here first of all you can spend quite a lot of luck to succeed um in this case that would be 22 which is quite a lot um secondly you can do what's called pushing the roll which is to make another attempt either with fast talk or a different skill to sort of carry on with this course of action However, in this case, if you then fail the roll, there will be negative consequences. Which in this okay. case, I'd say, would that be that you would uh, uh, draw the attention of the master of the house? Probably down on you if you fail oh, that's this. That's fine. That's so fine. All right. <laughs> Great. And we'll push the roll then. All right. So you said... Carry on. Yes. Oh, sort of like, <laughs> <laughs> As he sort of looks you up and down, he goes, and you sort of carry on, sort of me, like with your sort of looking very yes. ladylike, uh, and I'll just, I'll just kind of fix my coat and say, um, yes. Well, I like I said, I'm on here on casual business, but of course, um, with a big party like this, such affluent guests, there's always oh. the possibility that I would have to come later on not casual business and i think my presence may may um prevent that from happening don't you uh, think? yeah i think you better go in as as you mentioned that you could you know be there on other business he looks you know a little worried for a moment by that um, but, yes but uh, thank you for having your wits about you you better better go in and he shows you through into this this grand hallway with a, this staircase leading up to the upstairs gallery and uh, upper floor where this party is mostly going on. Although there are a few guests lingering in the downstairs hall as well. And as you move into the hall, you see um, probably a couple of faces you recognise you, that you've um, possibly seen in, in, the, in the papers, if the sketches of actually some of these people. But you do also notice um, Irene, uh, who seems to be talking to a another another young woman. I will walk up to them. Yes, I, I believe um, Lady Irene lives in my similar uh, boarding house. Is that correct? I would have seen you around. Great. Yes. Yes, she'll go ahead and walk over there then. Um, Detective Charlotte? Um, Detective Lottie Shaw, thank you. You were close. Mm. I recognize you to be Lady Irene, correct? I've seen you around. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yes. Oh, and um, 
apologies. Like I said, my name is Detective Lottie. What was your name? Miss um... I am Miss Martha Carter, uh, the grandniece of the gentleman who owns mm -hmm. this Ms. home. Carter. Lovely to meet you. Your grandniece. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Do you have you happened to see him recently? Oh, he was just here, and he went that way. Did you need to speak with him? Oh, um, yes, actually. Uh, I'm not here on business, but the, there was something I wanted to tend to. It's it's a it's a large party, a lot of affluent guests. I just want to make sure everything uh, looks to be okay. There's no one here that's not on the guest list, that sort of thing. <laughs> Um, if you'd like, I, I could direct you. That would be wonderful. Miss Martha, you obviously this party is for you to get introductions. Let me let me take care of this for you. And I'm going to take Detective Lottie to the side and we are going to walk around. It's like, what are you doing here? What do you mean, what am I doing here? I was invited. I'm not quite sure, but all right, so upper class society here. They do not need to know that I live in the same boarding house as you. Uh, understand? Hmm. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes, I understand. I'm, yeah. I apologies. It's okay. I figured if you were talking to someone, you must have known them. And new acquaintances trying to um, rub elbows and move up as ah. every lady does. You're here on business affair then. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll so, be quaint with you. I am as well. That is perfectly fine. I'm just making sure that we understand what's going on here. Yes. Well, I think we understand each other perfectly. Yep. All right, Lottie. Here, I will take you over to Sir John. Oh. Lady Irene. Ah. Good to see you again. And, ah. Uh, this delightful young lady brought her. I don't think we've met. This is Lottie Shaw, detective. She seemed very interested in talking with you. Ah, uh, a detective. Well, that's uh, certainly a turn up for the books. <laughs> and uh, to what do I owe the pleasure? Ah, well, I am. Um, I'm actually here on on family business. If if we could talk in private. Um, I assure you, you're not in trouble or under any kind of investigation. Uh, uh, family business? Does this concern uh, uh, Miss Miss Carter in, in in some way? Oh no, no, not really. I love. I I I, I met her earlier, and she's a lovely woman. Um, family business of my own, actually. Uh, well, if it's a private conversation, if we just uh, let's let's head through. Uh, I don't think there should be anyone in the library right now. Uh, uh, we just. Uh, Would that would be wonderful. Step through into that. And he um, leads you through into this quite large room at the front of the house. You can see there's um, a couple of large bookcases filled with leather bound tomes. There's um, two large glass cases on either side of the hearth. Both of them, you can see this miscellaneous array of um, items through the glass but you can't see them very well because the glass seems to have been sort of engraved so you can't really see what exactly is behind it um there's windows overlooking the foggy night outside and above the fireplace a a painting of a, a rather grand looking gentleman in a military uniform looks to be probably napoleonic era so quite quite a while ago now so at least 80 or so odd years back Oh, Lottie will go ahead and kind of trail the room a little bit before continuing conversation. She'll mm -hmm. um, feel down some of the spines of the books and she's she's clearly in awe. She thinks it's a magnificent house. Um, and then she'll she'll resume back to Sir Wallace. And, oh, well, this is this is quite a lovely home you have. Uh, yes, indeed. I, I bought it um, years back when I returned from Malta. Oh, yes. Malta on military? Oh, uh, no, diplomatic. <laughs> Ah, yes. Sure. Well, um, all kind of goes in the same part, I suppose. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, Who's the uniformed gentleman? Uh, Is it you? My father. Uh, Your father. I'm not quite that old. No, he uh, ah. he died back in the Peninsular War. Um, sure. Yes. Oh, well, my condolences. Uh, it, it was a long while ago. I was only a child. 
Yes, well, um, uh, on a similar note, um, I would like to inform you that I um, come from the Shaw family and we are a humble family that lives um, now in Portsmouth, actually. I just recently moved up to London. Um, and when I was a child as well, I lost a family member, uh, my aunt. Oh, that's terrible. Actually, yes, oh, thank you. Like I said, um, I was also quite young as you, so. Um, but but it, it has been something that set my family back quite a bit and um, we've, we've struggled to recover ever since. Uh, so it is something that I've dedicated myself to as part of my practice. And when going through materials that were left behind by my aunt, um, there was in fact a note that was addressed by you that I was hoping to speak to you about. A note? Uh, sure, sure. I can't yes. say the name rings a bell. Um, well, uh, Shaw, would, Shaw would be the name that my, my um, mother took after her maiden name when marrying my father, but my aunt would be Miss Walsh. Walsh. I can't. I can't say that that uh, rings a bell either. Um, what is the note regarding? Oh, I, I actually. I'm, I'm getting on a bit. My um, my memory's not what it used to be in my youth. I'm afraid. Oh no! Don't worry. I understand. I, I bring a copy with me. Um, and she produces this note folded. Um, and she opens it, and it reads, "Dear Miss Walsh, in response to your previous correspondence." I understand that the folio is of personal importance to you and your family, and that monetary compensation can mean very little in such cases. However, I must insist that you at least consider my offer, as I believe it could be of great help to your family circumstances. Signed by Sir John Wallace. Hmm. And he looks thoughtful for a moment, sort of scratching at his beard. And while well, he's just deep in thought, um, Irene and Maddie, what are you up to in this moment? Irene has kind of pulled back as soon as she heard that Sir John was going to take our new guest here to the library and has come back up to Miss Martha. And was like, I don't know if you're the sort that's interested in a good mystery, but I believe your, your great uncle is talking alone with detective Lottie Shaw right now and I was wondering and I'm saying this kind of in a whispered tone if you might be interested in a little eavesdropping yes <laughs> most of these people I don't know and it's a little awkward all so, right yes yes let's go see what's going on Get some gossip and yeah she kind of takes martha by the hand or around the uh, arm and kind of strolls her around to try and see if there's a better outlook do you know your way around the house is there anywhere that we might be able to sneak uh i've been venue? here for a couple of weeks we can probably go uh this way the servants route all right Okay, as you slip round to listen at the other door of the library, um, well, I'm going to ask for a listen roll from both of you to see mm. how much of this conversation you managed to hear. Making me pull out my glasses. Okay, so you can all hear the discussion that's going on. And you probably come in about the point that Lottie is of is finished reading this letter to Sir John. Huh. Hmm. Ah, yes, yes, I remember this now. Um the um family in Portsmouth with um they had I heard they had in their possession some it was some old herbal or something, quite an interesting uh, uh, book. Um, I, I, he points over to the cases in his bookshelves. I am a collector of both interesting artifacts and interesting tomes. I, uh, I hold quite the library here. Um, and I thought it would make a great addition. I, I wrote to your aunt and uh, requested to purchase it, and she, uh, well, 
didn't seem inclined so I wrote a few more letters and then she stopped to her stopped returning them um I'm afraid but uh I wasn't able to inquire in person as uh, I was in uh, Malta at the time hmm. was what how, how did you um come into the information that we had that book oh um a um a friend of mine uh, my secretary out in uh Malta he had uh dealings in the Portsmouth area yeah hmm. uh, he recalled His having name? seen it at some point um Belfont. Belfont. Okay. And she she pulls out this little but... um piece of paper. Well, she she basically just flips the paper over and kind of scratches a note on it or two. Um yes, well, um I'm sorry to say the reason why you stopped receiving correspondence is because she um fairly soon after uh receiving this letter and the others, she she passed away. Um in in a robbery that occurred in our home. She was living with us at the time. Oh, that's uh, awful to hear. Um, some kind of complication. I think someone came to seal some things and she was in the way. Um, and uh, it's just it's just been an interesting case, I would say. It's a, like I said, it's what's encouraged me to uh, take up my profession is getting to the bottom of it. We still haven't really discovered who um, did this deed and I figured um, you may provide some information considering that this book that you requested was one of the books stolen in the robbery. Would you know anything about that? Well, uh, all I know is I didn't manage to get my hands on it. Uh, not then and not since. I've not seen it pop up at any booksellers. Uh, um... is, there, is there a Call of Cthulhu kind of like a I think what you're asking Investigate. here is a yeah. psychology check um, yes. for a sort Bullshit of roll. the in, like the equivalent of an insight. Is that what you're after? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's psychology. psychology. Wonderful. Would you mind if I check to see? Oh, roll away. If Sir Wallace has truly seen this book or not. Oh, and this is my reminder. Um, if you any of you who have succeeded on rolls, you put a little tick next to them, just as you're going along, because that. Success means improvement. Um, would the success from me pushing the roll earlier still count as a success? Or uh, does that yes. Not? Ones where you spend luck don't, pushed ones do. So I'm going to turn to Miss Martha and go, could they be talking about William Belmont? I have no idea. He's a shipping magnate. I've met him on occasion. He's really into the occult. Meanings. Just a mm. little whisper to to Maddie. I don't know, but I'm fascinated by this book. And I think I'd like to read it myself. Indeed. Okay, uh, by the way. Yes. Um, <laughs> so would you like to stick with that fail? Or I'll, spend I'll stick with it. Or spend three yeah. points of luck to make it a success. Oh, it is three points, huh? It's mm. up to you. Pretty high luck. Yes, this is important to me. I'll spend those three. So or are you spending luck. The general oh. read you get off him is like he's hiding something, and that there was a sort of a long pause before he gave Belfont's name. So he, you could almost see the cogs whirring in his mind. Like, should I? What should I say? What sh name should I give? Um. But there was no sort of de delay on assembly when he was talking about not being not having seen the book. Okay, that so genuine, he seems, genuine about he the book. mostly genuine about that. Great. There is definitely something he is hiding here. Great, but okay. you're not quite sure exactly what. Hmm. Yes, well, um, thank you. That that that, that information, uh, still, is still meaningful to me. It's something something that I um. We'll continue to research, I think, for a long time, or try to solve. But uh, I, I, I don't want to take away from the festivities with my questioning. Oh um, no, no, no worries. I'm, I'm sorry. I can't be of more help. Uh, she seems oh, quite all right from our letters. Say, 
delightful woman, and I'm very sorry to hear what happened to her. Yes, thank you. Now, yes, Maddie? Uh, the moment that uh, Detective Lottie said, uh, I didn't want to take away from the festivities, I'm going to um, tap Lady Irene's arm and, and gesture like we should leave. And then we leave. Good idea. <laughs> and as you sort of laugh, as you hear the tap, tap of uh, Sir John's cane on the other side of the door, and then as the library door opens, and he heads back to rejoin the party. Um, Lottie, are you returning directly to the party, or? I would I would linger a little while in this area, just looking at the tomes, seeing if any stick out to me, look familiar. Okay, just um, like looking over the bookshelves, that sort of. Yes, because that's not a dangerous choice at all. No, I mean the bookshelves. Um, it seems <laughs> a a fairly ordinary mix of there's a lot of history, um, especially uh, Egyptology related books and Roman history. Um, quite a lot of uh, Roman literature on there is there. Uh, and uh, volumes of poetry and oratory, like there's a bunch of Horace and Cicero uh, all scattered along the shelves. Um, and also quite a few books that would class as um, books of of the occult interest um, sort of lined up. You can see uh, books discussing such things as like uh, mediums and hypnotism and all those sorts of practices. Um, but nothing that unusual, nothing particularly old looking, to be honest with the books. Most of the books seem fairly recent volumes. Um, the, the the items in the glass cases are a more odd sort of an assortment. As I said, you can't see them quite clearly because this glass has sort of been scratched over and engraved with this like sort of pattern that makes it hard to see clearly through. You can see there's chunks of rock, possibly bits of statues, Greek, Roman, Egyptian, uh, some small figurines, um, like some silverware, um, a few ornamental knives. It's a, the kind of miscellaneous collection that you get if you travel the world acquiring anything you can lay your sticky Victorian hands on. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, if, if she doesn't see anything that particularly catches her eye, she'll head to the party. Okay, so you head back and rejoin the party. I would probably look for Lady Irene and um, Miss Carter because I do not know anyone else there. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't take you long to be able to spot them amid amidst the crowd. And uh, yeah, you can make your way over towards them. Irene is pretending to talk about something completely bland and droll like the weather since they came back. <laughs> you are muted. Yes, I, I noticed. Um, and uh, I would comply. I will agree. I will counter some of the uh, conversation with some of my experiences with the weather in New York. Hmm. Weather so, talk. Is that what we do at parties? <laughs> sometimes. Oh. Um, uh, it's just that I am not used to the weather exactly as it is here. Um, sure. It's not quite as wet. Hmm. Understandable. Well, it, it is. It is quite. Um, it is quite uh, mundane outside, I suppose. Today, at least. <laughs> it's rather fascinating. Uh, Miss Martha here is from New York, and she was just regaling me with how different things were in New York, as I've never been myself. Yes, how are things there? It's prospering. The weather is... And... You're sort of saved from any further weather talk by uh, <laughs> the bell that rings for dinner <laughs> calls you all down to the um, 
the dining room for dinner. As, 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 we, as we walk, Lottie would press. And, so, I mean, it's, if it's prospering, it sounds quite nice. What, what, what would make you... I mean, I know you mentioned your uncle, but is there anything else that would make you want to leave? I mean, it's, it's such a lovely place. Oh, well, I had... Uh, my, my mother and father uh, are busy with my siblings and mm. their children. And as I am unattached and am significantly more devoted to studies and histories and things of that nature. Um, when the great uncle John offered to host me here for a while, I, I gladly took it up. Mm. And as I was telling, I miss, uh, miss or lady. Lady Irene. It as I was speaking with Lady Irene earlier, um, I do assist at the museum here. Ah, yes. Well, um, I do know quite a lovely professor down in Portsmouth. I know it's a bit of a ride, um, but quite a lovely man, actually. Very, very interested in getting more women into, into universities and, and, and learning about what they're interested in. This can be hard to come by. Very much so, it can be. Mm -hmm. Have you thought of going to university? Oh, I have. Oh, you have gone to university. Oh, quite. Yes, yes. Um, I it, It's already quite uh, foreign for uh, a woman to be a detective in this time. So I, I figured I needed um, the certificate to back it up. Mm. I have to work harder to prove your lot. Us women. That is significantly true. Yes, mm. well, do you know what's for dinner? I believe goose. Oh, yes. A rather small amount of goose. You can see as you go into the dining hall, the servants sort of rapidly adding more chairs because the guest list and the people who are actually at this party don't seem to match up at all. You could hear Sir John grumbling about it all the way uh, through through dinner. Uh, like he's. He's not the most polite of men, and he he has one of those voices where he doesn't do subtle um, whispering. So you know, you can hear him from halfway across the table going, "I don't know why I would ever invite him." He's seen the state of her dress this evening. Absolutely terrible. Um, if you would excuse me, I should probably keep him from um, going into a terror. Abusing. Yeah, yes, yes, I, oh, I shall one. see very really stupid ideas these days, young people. <laughs> and I will move over to Uncle John and um, try to calm him. Um, and look. Uh, Uncle. Yes? Let's let's have a seat and perhaps we can convince some of the people who came uninvited to dine outside uh, no half of them are nobility and you can't send them outside hmm. they cause an awful stink anyway uh, then it's just a formality it's a cuck done to this sauce Pauling. Fred, Fred, fetch us some more wine we'll need some more wine and he gestures to the same footman who um, Lottie ran into on the door, who heads off um, to get some more wine. And yeah, throughout dinner, he carries on. I mean, unless there's anything particularly like to bring up on in a topic, I am not going to recount the entire conversation of a many course dinner party. <laughs> no. Irene no. is going to basically cajole Lottie a little bit as this is going on. Just, <clears throat> just a little fun. And now we see the drollness of high society parties. Yes, it's um it's rather boring to be honest. I hate having to hold myself so proper. Mm -hmm. Shoulders back, chin up. Yes. Smile, smile, smile. Yes. 
positively <laughs> demure. Oh, look, he's about to call for more wine. Oh. <laughs> the wine still hasn't appeared. Yep. <laughs> Just that kind of thing, subtly to Lottie. Eh, Lottie. <laughs> sure, why, would, why would you want to make... Oh, money. Never mind. <laughs> Yeah, there's just this look that Irene yeah. gives Lottie. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't want to always stay in that boarding house forever. Yes, under me either. But Perhaps we could we could we could two part this. We could offer our services. If I fail as a detective, then at least they can talk to their loved ones who've passed. <laughs> it's a skill for. Not the faint of heart, as she gently taps your hand, but she <laughs> Well, eventually dinner winds to an end, and um, as is the custom, uh, the ladies depart the room and head head upstairs. Uh, what's the gentleman? Uh, so enjoy uh, some port and uh, probably some cigars. And the, so it's, it's the rest of the ladies sort of head on upstairs. You, they're fairly mixed. Ones. You, some of them are sort of the wives of the academics at the museums, or, or women who are themselves um, involved in academia and interested. The conversation steers more towards um, the re recent papers on the translation of um, hieroglyphic inscriptions rather than dresses in society but um as as you depart um the dining room back into the hall to head upstairs i would ask all of you to please make me a spot hidden roll to see if any of you notice something or if which of you might notice something <laughs> what a fascinating role turnout we just had. <laughs> yeah. Two extreme successes and one fumble. <laughs> okay. So um as you head out, um Maddie and Lottie, you both catch sight of the fact that the library door is um open, which is Lottie, I'm very sure you closed it when you left. It's, it's open the jar and then Irene walks into into the back of the two of you. <laughs> <laughs> so sends you all like careening forwards. I am so sorry. I was looking at the time. buttresses. Oh. Um hmm. excuse me, I believe the door to the library is open and it shouldn't be. Yes. I was Shall actually we? thinking that might be a chance for us to go somewhere, <laughs> somewhere else, look around. Yes, please. Can I come? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Yep. Let's... I will lead them toward the library. Mm -hmm. But before opening the door, I'm going to peek in through the crack to see what I can see. Okay. So you don't, there's nobody in there. It's, it's dark, the lamp. The gas lamp's been turned right down. But you can see um, there's broken glass scattered across the floor near uh, one of the display cases. That is not right. I'm going to open the door wide and turn up the light properly. Okay, so as you turn up the light, you can see there's broken glass not only... Um, Near, near this display case, but also the window nearest it, so the window in the far corner of the room next to the display case, also has been smashed. You see jagged, broken glass. Excuse me, and I'm going to leave and go fetch Fred. Fred was his name, right? Uh, the, Fred is uh, the footman, yes. Would you like to go, go look for Fred? Uh, yes, I'll look for Fred or any of the other um footmen or anyone who might be aware of the library and okay. what it's supposed to have 
Okay, I mean, you you would be familiar with sort of what is in the cave. You you've been in this room several times, so you you okay. you'd have seen what is in the cases normally. Um, mm -hmm. so. Well, then I will have. Um, I'll just tell Fred that somebody has been in the library. Well, um, please. There is no sign of Fred Uncle. as you as you sort of look around and sort of stick your head around the corner. No, no immediate sign of Fred. Um, you, you, you can actually have one of the, one of the other, one of the other footmen. I am going to gesture him over. Uh, Mom? Uh, please let Sir John know that there has been, um, some damages done inside the library. Um, right away. I'm, I'm going to turn around and go back to assess what is possibly missing if there is missing things uh, right right away mom and he heads back heads into the dining room um whilst whilst uh, maddie was outside uh, lottie and irene was there anything you wish to do yes <laughs> well, lottie you're a detective detective yes <laughs> thank goodness <laughs> this is more my speed than anything else that's happened so far tonight um if you, if you could just make sure no one enters uh don't touch anything Really, that's about it. Um, and Lottie will keep her. Is there anything curious that would make Lady Irene want to come in and touch things? Well, I oh, do you have any desire to touch a case full of strange historical and possibly occult looking objects? Yes, yes, of course. In which case, um, there is a case full of strange. Historic and occult looking objects with the glass at the front broken. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let Lottie detect and get in the zone, and then I'm going to sneak follow and observe and see if anything catches my eye. All right, so as you're kind of looking over her shoulder, um, I'll ask for a spot hidden from Lady Irene and Lottie. What are you doing in your detecting? What are you looking for? I think the main thing is fingerprints to start just before because uh, i assume that people we're in a party full of rich affluent people and there's figures that are now open to be touched so <laughs> i assume people are going to want to come in here and touch things so first thing we to secure would be fingerprints before any evidence gets tainted well um you don't actually see any fingerprints as such on any of the glass there's I'm going to ask for a spot hidden from you as well here. Sure. Does it... the Unless so you the have glasses... something else you would prefer to use. Um... If ever you think you have a more suitable skill for something, or you a skill you prefer to use for something, you feel free to suggest. Partly because mm -hmm. I cannot remember half the list of the Call of Cthulhu skills. It is a game where accounting is a skill. Spot hidden is fine. Oh wait, well, hold on. Can I roll that again? I didn't have my tick mark. The tick mark how does much... not affect the actual roll. Oh, it doesn't. No, oh. no, no. That just tells. That's just for when you get your improvements. So, ah. um, yeah, there's no no sign of fingerprints that you can see. Um, but you are aware that well-to-do people tend to wear gloves. Mm -hmm. As with the servants in a house like this. So as you look, I... look right back at Irene's gloved hands, you think, ah. Yes, okay, fine. You can touch things if you have your gloves on. <laughs> um, does it look like the glass was broken by hand, or did someone use something to break it? Is that something I would be able to pick up on? It looks... Like an um, implement, possibly uh, you'd need something like perhaps a fireplace poker or something fairly solid to crack the glass. It's quite like solid, solid glass. It would be unlikely you'd be able to just punch your way through it. And there's no trace of any blood or anything on it. Mm. Which, uh, and you know, there is a sturdy looking poker next to the fire. Um, oh, okay. What I'm going to ask here is can you make me an intelligence roll, please? Like something. I don't know whether I tell you or not. I'll take this with the cider. 
Where's intelligence on this sheet? Uh, it's on the characteristics. Up the top, it's your characteristics. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, as as you're kind of examining this, uh, Maddie, you return to the room. Ah. So, Lottie, as you're sort of examining this glass, as you're looking over for fingerprints, um, you can tell that both the window and the glass case probably were broken, probably with a similar implement. And interestingly, the window glass is not inside the room. I know what that means. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to um, come in behind uh, Detective Lottie and look through the glass case to see what is missing, if there is anything missing. Um, there are a couple of things missing. Two things, in fact. Um, one of them being a Roman signet ring that your great uncle sort of passed off as a bit of a, like, trinket rather than anything of particular interest, like a gold ring with an engraved stone in it. And the other is, um, I think you, you remember seeing before was a silver perfume bottle, um, very... French in, in style. Or perhaps German. Your uncle didn't seem entirely sure. But he, he kind of passed over as he was doing his collect, do, talking about his collection. Okay. Um, nothing else is missing, just, just those two things. Uh, what else is in the, the cupboard? Is it... Were those the only things of, like, a significant metal... Or... Yeah, they were the only things that were sort of metallic things. The rest of the stuff in this is mainly bits of stone. Um, so bits of sculpture, bits of historical um, masonry mostly, and small Roman figurines. So those were probably the two things that look more sort of expensive in that case. Although probably some of the stone artifacts are worth a lot more in, in collectors' hands. In that case, I'm going to go around the library to see if there's any of the other um, cases that may have had anything else. I'm assuming it's a fairly large library with um, more than one display case as such. Um, there's only there's a couple of display cases. Only one has been broken. Um, it's fairly large, sort of stand like a tall Georgian townhouse room. So high ceiling, um, quite a big room, but still very much a personal domestic library rather than sort of a uh, big hall. Um, okay. There's no sign of any damage to any of the other sort of cases or bookshelves or anything. Okay. Well, there's only two things missing from here, but since the door was open, it's possible one of the other rooms. And Fred's missing. Um, it's, it's quite clear that someone's intruding. If you, if you look at the window, the glass is all on the outside. So I'd assume they're still here somewhere. Hmm. Unless oh, well, Moira I've... is backwards and it's the opposite case. You know, when the glass is not inside the room, that means someone broke in, not outright. Or is it vice versa? If the glass is inside the room, they broke in. Yeah. If it's outside, they went out. They broke out. Okay, yeah, well, that makes... Okay, duh. Okay, the opposite thing. That's what Lottie would say, the opposite thing. <laughs> Moira is not as good of a detective as Lottie is. <laughs> That's fine. Um, <laughs> That makes sense. That makes more sense. I don't know why. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yes, well, whoever it was, I, I, I think they've wandered around and then they've left. Hey. What is the term they use for this? A, uh, a smash and grab? Hmm. Something like that. Hmm. Hmm. 
<laughs> you hear the tap, tap, tap of a cane uh, in the outside hall. And then uh, Sir John appears around the door. What's all this, what's all this <clears throat> about? Uh, something about a break-in? A theft. Oh, dear God. Not again. Oh, rather a breakout. They were in here earlier and left through the window. Seems rather the, uh... dramatic way of leaving. Yes. Uh, yes, well, only two things are missing from here. We have not checked the rest of the house. Uh, uh, James, could you just check the rest of the house? See if anything else, any any signs of any breaking in the rest of the rooms. Could could you tell us about these two missing items? Uh, let's, uh... It's it's the Roman signet ring and the silver perfume bottle that was in this oh. coat. Ah, well, the uh, the ring. Uh, no great value. Well, the, the gold in it's worth something, but the, yeah, the digging up signet rings uh, to a penny these days. Uh, rather nice piece. The did you say? The bottle's gone. Mm -hmm. Ah, ah, ah right. Uh, we should probably find whoever took that. Did they take the most valuable things in the case, or did it seem like they took specific things valuable to them? I. Well, it's not worth a lot. It, it's. It's got sentimental value. It was given to me by a, a, a friend um, for safekeeping uh, some years back. Uh, you can see him looking, scanning quickly back and forth over the rest of the case. Uh, good. Uh, yes. I've, I've already checked, Uncle. I've spent enough time in here. It doesn't good, seem good, anything just, else was taken. Uh, yes. Interesting. Hmm. Well... Miss, Miss, um, sorry, Detective Shaw. Yes. You are a detective, right? Uh, with... Yes, I've, I've already, um, I've looked for fingerprints and I haven't found any obvious ones. I assume the, the person was gloved. Um, hmm. The best possible thing to do would be to lock down the house, see who's here, and um, check with the doorman to see who's missing. Uh, yes. Fred uh... is missing. I couldn't find him anywhere. Oh, well, well, that's huh. one of the servants, isn't it? Yes, he was the, the on the door. Uh, mm. uh. Oh, well, we can't uh, ask the doorman who is or isn't here if he is not mm -hmm. here. Well, uh, <sighs> has anyone gone and checked, checked the Muse house at the back, the servants' quarters? Uh, uh, not yet. Well, uh, if if you'd like, I can. Yeah, see, 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 see if uh, Fred's uh, out there anywhere. Um, I will... Uh, Corral the guests and see if anyone else is missing. Although, seeing as they didn't invite half the people here in the first place, Harris. You, you see his eyes flick over to Lottie for a sec. Yes, rather rotten. Yes, <laughs> yes, to indeed. show up where you're not invited. Well, rather fortuitous that you're here. Um, yes, I will go corral the rest of the guests. Um, maybe we can see if we can get this resolved without uh, getting. Uh, police directly involved just yet they ask an awful lot of questions to stick their noses in where they're not wanted yes well i uh, I, I assure you my agency would be up to the task hmm. if this continues to be yes i will if, if it because of an ongoing case i will uh if you require any monetary assistance uh well i am happy to hand you the money or or Man, you can sort it out, or if you require any larger sums, uh, if you can find my lawyer, he's upstairs somewhere. Of course, I I'll let but you know. But I don't know. think for you now... should need that, to be honest. Yes, <laughs> for now, for now, it is just. Cool. A Why would your lawyer be upstairs? I invited would him to the party. Would he not have been? Would he not oh, be in the yes. dining room yes. with you? Yes, good point. The dining room is on the same floor. I, I momentarily forgot the plan of my house. It's old age, old age. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, he's just through that. Ah, yes, I will uh, try and keep keep an eye on the guests, uh, and uh, I'll leave you th you three ladies to see if you can find any more of 
can we involve the police? All right. I, a... Lady Irene, can you um, please fetch the ladies from upstairs? Of course. I do not mind doing so. I Thank believe you. I should um, accompany you to the shed. Miss Carter, just in case our robber is there, I'd want to be able to apprehend him. Thank you. Okay, so Lady Irene um, heads upstairs to gather the ladies of the party. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, Lottie and Maddie head, head out the back um, towards the servants' quarters, which are mostly situated in so it's a muse building at the back of the house. So you've got this grand house at the front that fronts onto Grove Square. And then at the back, you've got what's called a muse house, which is the smaller, lower story building with the stables and servants' quarters. And these head out the back across this, this yard. The air is thick with this thick, cloying uh, fog. It seems to be even thicker and denser than before. Um, and with most of the servants busy uh, in the front of the house, it's quite quiet back here as you sort of step through towards um, the upper level of the stables. As the sounds of the of the party sort of fade away into the background, and as you step through into the stables. First thing you immediately see is the body lying in the middle of the floor. And the sight of this dead body sprawled out on the floor. This could be a bit of a shock depending on how strong your constitutions are here. So I'm going to ask you both to please make me a sanity roll here. You can see the body sprawled out on the straw still wearing his very formal footman's uniform. And Where is the sanity button? Um, towards the upper right underneath your characteristics, I believe. Uh, uh, the green one or the purple? The green one, yes. Ooh. Oh, that is a fail. <laughs> so Oh no. <laughs> so Lottie, you managed to keep your cool. Maddie, you let sort of let out this soft shriek of alarm and just take a step back in alarm and uh, as as you let out this this shriek of alarm. <laughs> very good shriek of alarm. Um, I'd like you to deduct two points from your overall sanity. So it's the middle box on your sheet. Just take that volume down by two. Which is totally fine. But yeah. Cat wanted this to happen. <laughs> they were rooting for your sanity loss. How dare they? <laughs> let out a little shriek of alarm. Um, yeah. The body is very unmistakably that of Fred. Well, um, at least he's not the culprit, right? <laughs> she she looks at Maddie and laughs, and, she, and then she quickly realizes that was a mistake and just, um, do 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 you need anything, Miss Carter? Perhaps, the, the, uh, per, per, perhaps perhaps we do need the police. Yes, I'm um, going to turn and go right back into the main building. That's you, you, quite all right. <laughs> you're probably heading into the main building as. Uh, as Irene is probably heading back down to the ladies, you see a rather pale-faced Maddie heading back from the back of the house. What's wrong, Miss Martha? You you look positively dreadful. Uh, we we found Fred. Um, we need the pol police, please. Um, and I am going to go look for uncle and tell him what happened. Okay, so as you head to look for your uncle, 
Lottie, you've been left alone with a dead body. Lottie with the body! <laughs> All right. Um, Irene I... is heading that way just out of curiosity, just so you know. <laughs> okay. Yes, I, I would just take a cursory look at the body. I don't want to touch it too much because I know the police are coming and uh, whatever, detective, detective. Um, so I probably would avoid touching anything, but I'm just trying to get a general idea of how he died. There, so as, as you sort of look over him, there's no, no blood. There is no sort of obvious signs of wounds. He just seems to be lying sprawled on the ground, very clearly not moving, pale skin, pale and cold. And there's something in his hand. See his hand clutched around something. Ah, yes, I will take that. Well. I'll be gentle with the body. Um, Pray open his hand. You see there in his hand a, a silver bottle. About this high, like a, a fine silver perfume bottle. Hmm. Interesting. Uncapped. Oh. Okay. I will cap it <laughs> if I know where the cap is. Yeah, you can uh, have a start hunting around in the straw uh, for the cap of this bottle. It doesn't take you long to find it. Um, and you're probably hunting around looking for it as uh, as Irene uh, enters the stable. And Irene, as you enter the stable, and you see uh, this dead body sprawled on the floor, Lottie searching around in the straw near it. I am going to ask you for a sanity roll for keeping you cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you are also totally fine with this. Really incredibly fine. Um, he's He's been done in. Uh, um, yes, yes, he has. Uh, what What are you doing in the straw? Oh, it, it, it's a It's a murder investigation now, Lady Irene. Don't you think I'm doing my job? <laughs> could you Could you see if you can find? Um, uh, I, I I found the bottle. I I just don't know where the ring is. I assume if he had the bottle, he would have the ring. Um, could you help me look for it? Um, as well as the cap to the bottle. Well, are you going through his pockets? Yes, Lady Irene is <laughs> probably going through his pockets. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to ask for a spot hidden from both of you here. Um, let's see, uh, see who's, who finds what, where, when. Not doing too well with the spot hidden rolls. No, but luckily, uh, Lottie, you find the, the cap seems to have rolled a short distance away off on the floor. Um, the ring was tucked in his waistcoat pocket. Perfect. Okay. All right. And with this case clearly solved, mm -hmm. I think, because I will forget to do so otherwise, this might be a good point to take a quick break. Yes. If I can make this work. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back in 10 minutes.
Okay, so before the break, our investigators had attended a party at the, the house of Sir John Wallace, uh, Maddie's great uncle. And they had all been going fairly well, apart from, you know, a few questions about did you murder my aunt 20 years ago? Uh, but mostly discussions of the weather and getting to know people until it was discovered that a couple of items had gone missing from the cabinet in the library. And now there's a footman dead in the stables. And that was where we left off, as uh, with Irene and Lottie going through the pockets of a dead body, whilst uh, Maddie had gone to the front of the house to find her great uncle, who uh, is back in sort of the dining room, <laughs> sort of chatting away to his guests, who you can see are starting to get a bit restless, because probably want to be heading home now but he is regaling them all with a tale of his uh, adventures and excavations in Egypt and, and then uh, we we went down through into the second burial chamber and uh, uh, excuse me one moment uh, Maddie, I think Maddie just wants a word uh, yes Uncle we we uh... We found Fred, and he is d dead on the floor in the stable. Ah, uh, that's less than ideal. Yeah. Um. Okay. No need to make a fuss. If you, uh, I can send Jennifer to help you if you want. If you just get the. I don't know, shuffle the body out of the way a bit, maybe? Should we not be calling the police? Oh, God, no. They'll ask all sorts of unfortunate questions. Can't get the police involved in this sort of thing. Um, look, just try and keep people... Just... Yes, yes. Have you never come across a dead body before? No! Oh, well dear, you're going to... Look, you're going to have to toughen up your uh, constitution for that sort of thing. Ah, uh, look, just keep any... I'll keep... Uh, yes, uh, keep everyone else out there. Okay, leave the body where it is for now. I'll get James to move it later. Um, uh, any sign of the uh, items? Don't. No. All right. Well, I I, um, I, I, I saw the body and came, do you came think, back here. Do you think we can trust? Uh, well, I'm fairly sure we can trust Lady Irene. Um, mm. We need to make sure that neither of them uh, goes gossiping about this. Yeah, it wouldn't wouldn't do to have uh, tales of you know, dead servants spreading around. Now. Just uh, head back there, tell them not, not to say anything, and I will uh, probably should see the rest of the guests home. Uh, yes, that, that sounds fast. You you go back, make sure they don't say anything, tell them to wait there, and I'll uh, send James to help uh, as soon as I can. Jolly good? Jolly good. Uh, what? That's not how... That's... Off you go, dear. Does he... If he pushes me in the direction of... <laughs> I'll go. But I, I am like... That, that, that's not how this... That's not how this is supposed to work. Yeah, he sort of gives you a firm push sort of back towards the back of the house. And I will go. All right. So as you're heading back towards the back of the house, um, Lottie and Irene, you had uh, found the ring tucked away in Fred's pocket and the 
and you now have the bottle and its stopper. But uh, yes, there's no. So from your investigation, there was no sign of any any wounds or any any sign. There was no signs of struggle on Fred. He just. If either of you, I'm going to ask for a medicine roll. If either of you want to do any sort of more detailed determination of cause of death, I think that would be medicine. If if you wish to. I know nothing about medicine. That is fine. I failed. <laughs> and... Yeah. Bobby, is it okay if I see the items? I'm just curious. Um. Yes, but as of right now, um, uh, I'm not quite covered. Sure, what killed him? It doesn't look like there's any obvious wound. So, considering this was uncapped, it may have been this. Please be careful handling it. Okay. She'll hand it over. Okay. And it is this this elegant silver bottle, uh, as as pictured uh, on. I think it's I put it on Roll Twenty and Discord. Uh, good. Pretty sort of engravings and patterns on it. Um, appears to be empty. And uh, you turn it over in your hands. There's a something engraved upon it in the on the bottom. There's there's something here on the bottom. Uh, and she's going to try and read it. Let's see, you sort of. Lean, lean down, take a look. It looks to be, um, looks to be in French, which, uh, just about make out. And this is where I, for the benefit of any viewers, I do not actually speak French. So it's something along the lines of, Je vous capterai avec votre nom et vous livre avec le feu. Ixalala. I will put that in the chat for you. Right. I believe it's French. Um, I don't know French. Neither do I. Um, it also appears to be empty. Hmm. Yes, well, furthering my suspicion of whatever was inside may be the culprit. I don't know if he drank it or spilled it or... Uh, I mean, I, I assume it's some kind of ancient perfume. It may have become toxic over time. Maybe. That inscription would be important to know, though. Mm -hmm. We're surrounded by a bunch of affluent people. Some of them may be familiar with French for whatever reason, just because they're rich and they want to be. Perhaps we can find a guest who would know. You wouldn't, you wouldn't think uh, Sir John would keep anything dangerous and in the library well, of all places oh um, well why I, I like i said i mean if, if it was a perfume um you know made of some kind of natural material i mean you know you keep fruit and it rots and if it's a perfume and it's made of some kind of flower or concoction it's possible it just became toxic over time and no one knew until it was uncapped i'm just curious why fred would do such a thing i mean a doorman you you don't think Sir John is um, rude to his servants or anything like that? Do you, do you think he would no. cause any reason for someone to want to steal from him? Or No, hmm. I don't think so at all. He seems uh, rather boring, but at least honest. Um, I, yes. I am curious as to why the body would be here if the culprit broke out of the window if he left i'm unsure there's um there's still a lot of things that need to be uncovered it's almost like i said i don't see why there would be any motive for this especially if these weren't just the expensive items and and, and, and to open it so soon right why wouldn't you want to get to a um you know, secure location and open it then. Yes. What was the urgency? It, the, the, there's a lot of loose strings that we will need to tie with time. Mm -hmm. Perhaps it was even a setup. Too early to say. I'd like to know what this inscription means. 
me too. Or, oh, this is just my imagination getting away with me, but maybe these aren't the actual items in their fabrications. Um, Possibly. Maddie, Maddie approaches and knocks on the door, not going in. Hmm. Yes, well. Hello. Uh, let's head out. There's yes. nothing more to do with this body, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, if his eyes were open when he died, I would close them. Okay, so you pull his, his eyes, his eyes closed. And I'll kind of brush the straw off of my, my coat and, and fix my hair and go to the door. Yes, who is it? it, it it's me. Oh, perfect. You should um, open the door and walk out. I will. I, I spoke with my uncle. And he said that one of the um, other footmen will uh, come momentarily to assist with the search if of anything. He mm. asked to know if any of the items that were missing were found. Yes, yes. Um, they in fact were. Uh, that there is no more searching really that needs to be done, I, I suppose. Um, proper preparation of the body to uh, be laid to rest. Um, but but the, the the perfume bottle. I, I I'd like to I'd like to ask your um. Well um we need to speak to Sir John Wallace. There's much to know. Do you know French? Yes. You know French. Mm hmm. Ah, Americans. Fascinating. Um, here, go ahead. Um, <laughs> here, there's an encryption. Yeah. Read this. I'm curious to know what it says at the bottom. Um, it says, I capture you with your name and bind you with fire. Ixalala. Hmm. It, it, that part's not French. Might be a name. And this was a perfume? Never heard of I perfume assumed. capturing people before. Mm. Quite strange. Hmm. So are you having this conversation sort of outside of the stable, as you say? Yes. Sort of in, in that foggy courtyard between the mews and the main house. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. The, this damp, clammy, clammy fog around you. And I'd like you all to make me a spot hidden check here, please. That's two hearts and one fail. Okay, so as as you're as you're having this discussion, as you're sort of as discussion over the perfume bottle, Lottie and Maddie, you see something, brief glimpse of something moving behind Irene. It's this very glimpse out of the corner of your eye, in the light from the windows. It looked almost for a moment like there was something in the fog. Some weaving tendril of movement. Just a glimpse for barest of moments out of the corner of your eye behind Irene. I think someone might be listening. Mm -hmm. um, there is I'm someone outside. Um, we are actively investigating something and you must come to a halt and she'll start walking in that direction. Okay, so as, as you as you sort of, as you take a few steps in that direction, it's it's not so much so much as you feel yourself walk into something, and the first thing you notice is this this smell not just the smell of the fog but this like damp harborside smell of like salt and water, and the second is the feel of something cold and clammy in the fog. Touching sort of against against the side of your neck, this this tendril in the air. This sort of reaches out. This cold tendril 
and then attempts to wrap itself around oh. you. And <laughs> as, it, as you feel this with tendril of reaching out, reaching out to wrap itself around you, um, Lottie, what are you doing? Get your hands off me! <laughs> She'll, she'll just try to shake it off. Okay. What I would like here is your choice of either a fighting brawl to fight it off or a dodge to sort of just evade whatever this thing is. Um, dodge it, dodge it, dodge it. Dodge it gives you a better chance because you only have to match it. Okay. I will do that then. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> and... Yes, you uh, you feel this tendril sort of reaching out towards you. You manage to pull away from it, it fast. You can't see it, but you could definitely feel there was something there in the fog. And I need a sanity roll from you for that. Sure. There was something there, something cold and clammy, and very much not fog. Oh, thank goodness! <laughs> oh. You still lose one point of sanity. On a success. But you're keeping your cool. As... Oh, I, I lose a point of sanity. I made a yes. I made a sanity roll earlier as well, didn't I? Yes. The other that yes. so the other one you didn't have to lose anything from. Okay. So when you roll a sanity roll, you either succeed or you fail. And if you fail, you get worse consequences. If you succeed, you may suffer no consequences, or in some cases you may still suffer a minor loss of sanity, depending on what it is that you have just encountered. Um, Got it. <laughs> so from the perspective of Irene and Maddie, uh, you can't see what just attacked Lottie. She seems to be sort of just fighting the fog itself. It's this weather. Maybe we should just yeah. go inside. Uh, De Detective Shaw, let's, let's go inside. There, there um, is a person here, and they touched me, and I am I'm finding them up. They need to be apprehended. <laughs> and she like she pulls these um, handcuffs out of her pocket, and is basically just handcuffing the fog, like and blindly wait, trying and to. As James will James will be outside momentarily. Let's just go. Maybe at I, least I, just I, inside. I just need a light. Do you have a candle? Um, um, no. <laughs> as this discussion is going on. Um, Irene, you feel this cold, clammy touch reaching out for you. This, this tendril from the fog, you, you, like reaching out, wrapping around you. What would you like to do? Uh, I'm going to scream, <laughs> and I'm going to struggle and try and get away. <laughs> All right. Uh, give me a probably a dodge. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you managed to <laughs> evade, evade it, this cold tendril wrapping around you. Why? For those, that was an extreme success on her dodge, which is what she needed there. <laughs> and it, but I do need a sanity <laughs> roll from you, Irene. Oh, of course, of course. Let's, let's please, let's go inside. I don't feel safe out here in this fog. Please. I am going to turn and go towards the light, towards the door to the um, the home. Okay. All right. So as you head towards the door, towards the house, um, you feel another of these tendrils reaching out, coiling its grasp around you as you try to make for the door. I'll ask for a dodge for you. Lady Irene, you lose one point of sanity, but you're otherwise surprisingly okay with all of this. This is just enough. That was a fail. And... Maddie has almost made it for the door. She's reaching for the handle. As Maddie, you feel this tendril wrap its way up around your not neck and into your mouth and up your nose. And suddenly, like your air is being choked off, and you find it hard to breathe. And as you start to struggle, um, you lose one point of health, and. You feel this thing sort of reaching out to choke you. Oh 
my gosh. They don't hear anything from me because the, the, the tendril of whatever is in my mouth and in my nose, and I'm starting to suffocate. Yeah, we can't make struggle? any noise. Yes, oh, yeah, I, I'm trying you can see to. Each other. Though the air is thicker before you, you can still see that she seems to be struggling against something. You can't see what. And yeah, Maddie, it's getting it's getting harder to harder to, to breathe. You will lose three points of sanity for this. You, this is a like oh, this is stressing experience. As yeah. It's yep. push, pressing harder than you like coiling. You can see you feel it reaching for your eyes, your ears, everything. This thing no, surrounding I am, you. I'm digging. I am digging with my hands at my yeah, face. There's nothing and... there. You can feel it within you, but also you can't. It seems it's insubstantial as the fog itself as you're trying to grasp at it. And I'm starting to double over. Um, trying to go help. You, that's. You... that's... Yeah, you can make me get a strength of throw to try and get out of this. <laughs> yeah, can we, yes, yes, please. Are we able to, are Lady and Irene and I able to assist in any way? Is there like a help feature or is it just kind um, of work also? You can, you can try and get it as you come up and get near her and try and help, but then you can't see what she's fighting against here. You can. Is um, it a straight string? Is it the green or the purple? Green. And you manage to break free. Yeah, not exactly and fresh air into your lungs, but air. Inside! And I'm going yep. straight through the door. Yeah. And I am going to, as soon as the two of them are inside, I'm going to lean against the door and catch my breath. Yeah, so you, you dash inside, sort of slam the door behind you. You're back in, in, the, in the hallway at the back of the house. What is that? I don't... This is our culprit. I'm certain of it. I don't know why we left it out there. Oh, hope to call the police. I think something framed Fred, and I think that person was it. What were they doing? Were they choking you? Or are you okay? It... It felt like something was going into my mouth and into my nose and was starting to go in behind my eyes and in my ears and around my throat. I couldn't breathe at all. Mm -hmm. And she's still very quite red in her face, uh, in the flesh that you can see, um, even under the very light amount of uh, powder she has on her face. Yes, well, um, let's, let's get you washed up. Um, uh, you've been through a lot, Miss Carter. Let's, um, let's get you washed up. I, I well, believe so. As, uh, as you're having this, you can sort of see, not your imagination, but it's what the fog seems to be starting to seep in underneath the door. Just for a moment, and then sort of pulls back outside under the light of the, the gas lamp. But just for a moment, after saw in your eye, you saw you saw the fog moving there. I am going to very quickly move away from the door. I do not like this fog. Yes, well, none of us do. <laughs> just the weather. There's like this tension thinking about how creepy that was. Let's um yes. Um Let's go. Let's go. And, and in fact, um Lady Irene, if you could accompany her to the restroom, I will go get um I will go get some wine from downstairs from the men. <laughs> good. That's a good idea. Yep. Come along. As, as you head head into the bathroom. Um you can hear from downstairs the sound of what seems to be the guests leaving. Um, as, and you can hear very clearly Sir John's voice echoing up. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, oh, best, best be getting on. Um, uh, apologies for the lack of the wine. You just can't get the staff these days sometimes. Uh, lo lovely to see you. Lovely to see you. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, yes, yes. And he 
um, ushers the guests out. Um, yeah, you're able to get your hands on some, was it wine you were after? Um, maybe something stronger than wine, if it's available. Oh, yeah, yeah, you had this, um, some brandy, some sherry. Sure. Whatever, whatever has the most kick to it. <laughs> she'll grab and she'll, and she'll kind of um, rush back. If she runs into, um, Sir Wallace on her way, just passing, then she'll stop and talk to him. But if not, she'll go back to, um, Miss Carter first. Yeah, he's down by the door. So yeah, you, unless you sort of deliberately go to look for him, you can sort of slip back to the others without passing, crossing his path. Yeah, I wouldn't go to him then unless he was on the way. All right, so you, you rejoin the other sort of upstairs and in the washroom, sort of ladies' powder room. I probably placed uh, Maddie on like a couch, like a chase or something like that, and I've brought some water for her face. And right now, Irene is just kind of thinking about what this could be what possibly this could be, what, what's going on. There's something very fascinating about this potion bottle or perfume bottle. I'm wondering if it's possible, Keeper, if I could do an occult roll. Oh, you most definitely could. Yep. Mm -mm. No, as far as you can, I mean, it definitely matches up with experience experiences you've read about of people being attacked by malevolent spirits um sort of sensationalist claims of people who attempt to ghostly possession and ghostly attack but doesn't ring any more specific bells than that mm. might need to look up that name But are you doing all right now, dear? Just relax, take a deep breath. We need to call the police. There's an intruder in the property. So we need to call the police. Uncle won't call the police. Will you call the police? Hmm. Well, we have Lottie here. Maybe she knows, maybe she has someone in in police jurisdiction that she knows that we can call. But I do believe this needs to be investigated thoroughly. Uncle needs, oh, James. James is going to be going outside. He needs to know. Uh -huh. Yeah, you hear the sound of footsteps down in the hall as uh, James the footman is heading out towards the back. I'm going to get up quickly. James! <laughs> uh, uh, Miss Carter! Don't, don't go outside. There's, there's someone in, in, in the fog. Someone? Just accosted us. Oh, I need to I'll go out and give him what for? Can't have anyone hanging around in our courtyard accosting young ladies, can we? No, but please be careful. It very nearly strangled me. Completely. Be careful. We wait, couldn't wait. see. It's so foggy outside, we couldn't see where or who. He sort of eyes the door warily. You're saying there's someone out there? Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, I knew this job was a bad idea. Um, right, uh, I'll... Wait, but Sir John told me to go out... Uh, is it true Fred's dead? Quite. He has been done in. Oh, poor chap. I mean... Wouldn't say we were friends, but I wouldn't wish that, you know, we would work, work together. Mm -hmm. uh, you 
think it was very the, do you think it was the uh, the man in the frog that got him? Uh, it must have. He he tried to strangle me. I couldn't breathe at all. But it felt like he was trying to shove things in my in my nose and my mouth as well as strangle me around the throat. That's so distasteful. <laughs> yes. You see, James, it has gone really quite pale now at this point. Like it's very unnerved. It takes a couple of shuffling steps away from the door. Speak with Uncle. Maybe you can convince him to call the police to check. He, yeah. I mean, if there's a man lurking out there, we need to get the get the police here here right away. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go talk to Sir John. Uh, maybe you ladies should uh, move towards the front of the house, somewhere a bit safer, perhaps. Uh, if it's a, if there's someone out there attacking people, I don't, I don't like the idea of you ladies being out here, up here on your own. What, was the window in the in the library boarded? Um, uh, I made a start on it. Uh, then I've been sent hither and thither to count guests, and uh, now I have to pour Fred. Um, bear with me one sec. And you see him scurry off towards the library. You hear. Uh, finished. So there's only a couple of boards to put across there. Uh, yeah. Not a very big hole, really. Uh. Better than letting the person who did all this back in. Uh, yeah, in indeed. Uh, you should be safe safe in there for now, ladies. I'll go. Where has he got to? You know, for, for, a, ma for a man of his age, he can really move quite fast when he needs to. Um, I'll, oh. I'll, I'll go find him, see if I can... I'll tell him about the developments. Um, if you, uh, if you need anything, just just shout. Uh, someone will come. Thank you. Do, do you want to move to the library, Miss Martha? Mm. No, probably just the parlor across from the dining room. Right, that's what library. I was thinking. Let us let us adjourn there and hopefully we'll meet Detective Lottie on the way. Okay, so if you'd like to um you can adjourn to sort of the dining room or the or one of the drawing rooms upstairs if you if you should wish. Uh, uh the dining room then. Yes, yeah. the dining room. So, yeah, you you adjourn to the dining room. Uh, Lottie, are you reconvening them with them, or do you have uh, other business? I'd be rejoining. All right, so you all are reconvening in the dining room. The guests have now all departed. It's just you, Sir John, and the servants. Um, well, I brought you some vermouth. <laughs> I thought maybe a little bit stronger kind of wine might be useful. Thank you. And I will very unladylike drink about half of the glass. <laughs> so, looks imported. <laughs> Italy, very nice. Um, Lady Irene, do you need some as well? Please. She'll pour her a glass. <laughs> I was not expecting this party to end like this. Definitely more curious than everything. <laughs> yes. A bunch of rich people in a rich house. That's how it goes. I mean, usually there isn't um, someone who passes away, but um, yes. 
rather unfortunate. Indeed. You said Sir John was here now? That he, he was in the house, sorry. Um Oh. Yeah. He he will if you wait around, if if unless there's anything you wish to discuss before he returns, you can wait till he re rejoins you, unless there's any other matters you wanted to mention in private. I am going to stay quiet. Why put panic on anyone else? I would just be further investigating the evidence that we found, looking the perfume bottle over, maybe even wafting the smell, see if it smelled like it had gone rotten or It toxic doesn't really, or... it doesn't, if you waft, the only smell you're getting off it in, it does perhaps smell like it's rotten rotten, it's like a, a damp sea sort of smell, like. The one that we smelled outside? Yes, yes. Ah, okay. <laughs> Not at all like perfume. Hmm. Interesting. And the ring, does it look like it had been damaged or uh, does it have inscriptions on it as well? Does it seem like there's any furniture? No, no inscriptions. It's just got um, a little little carving of a dolphin on it. That's all. Hmm. A dolphin. Okay. Yeah, she'll just be looking that over and, and then consulting her notes, writing things down for a police report, basically getting ready for that. Exala. Exala. Hmm. And I will continue to sip what's left of, of the vermouth that was given to me. Uh, I brought the whole bottle, so if she needs a if <laughs> she needs a refill, if qui basically quietly without saying anything, Just every now pork. and then Lottie will Lottie will glance over and without even like necessarily looking, she'll kind of pick up the bottle and hand it. <laughs> to Miss Carter to pour for herself. Okay. So she'll be like writing and then just, here you go. <laughs> so as you are sitting in this still quite brightly lit dining room, so the, the, the gas lamps are still all turned up as they were for the dinner party. Um, you can see sort of through the windows, the back of the dining room, you can see sort of the thick fog outside pressed up against the glass. And just out of the court, there are, every now and again you get this slight sense that there's something moving out there up against the glass. Pressing inwards. Is anyone getting a chill? Mm, indeed. And Irene is actually staring at the window. She's definitely clutching her red shawl a little closer to her. I I will get up and um. Are are any of the servants in the room or um, not currently? No. Then in that case, I will get up and place another log or two on the fire. I believe there's a fireplace in yes. the dining room. Yes, there is. Yeah. Yes. And gets a little warmer, the fire burns a little brighter. And you hear the, the tap, 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 tap of Sir John's cane as he comes down oh, through into the dining room. Ah, well, that's the guests out the way. You seem to have put the frighteners on poor James. He's refusing to go out there now. Uncle... We were accosted outside. Ah, by by what? I mean, by who? Oh, we couldn't see who it was, but they were strangling me and trying to shove. I, I could not breathe through whatever they had shoved into my mouth and my nose. Ah, but you, but you, you, you got back inside, all right? Very good. Quick thinking. Did it, it attack either of you two? He looks between Lottie and Irene. Tried. And you got out and scathed. Yeah. Yes, we brushed them off. Excellent. Um, I have quite a few questions. Uh, yes, yes. 
So um, we, we found the evidence, right? We have um, the perfume bottle and the ring. I'm not so sure what killed Fred. Do you have any suspicions? I uh, <laughs> have a, a couple of ideas, but I'd like to, I'd rather hear your thoughts first. Uh, you are the detective here. Yes, well, um, there was no sign of any blunt or sharp trauma, no blood, no wounds, no, oh, and any kind of, I don't know, really, I mean, it seemed very serene, he just seemed to sleep. Um, but uh, when we were being attacked by this person outside, I assumed the true culprit that was potentially trying to set Fred up um, with that ring in his pockets and, and, and the perfume bottle uncapped, um, he smelled quite similar to what was in this perfume bottle, which, might I say, doesn't really smell like perfume. Rather, rather briny. Do, do you know what the contents of this bottle were? I have never opened it. Hmm. What, what, what makes it so valuable that it was part of your collection? Oh, it's not particularly valuable. It's a old French piece, uh, it was, uh, a gift, uh, from an, an old friend. Uh, that's why I said it's sentimental value. Ah. You said you were looking after it, protecting it? Did other people want it? Uh, well, you... thieves will get their hands on anything, and some things are probably safer out of general hands, right? Ah. Uh, sure. Yeah, but uh, sadly wasn't safe from... All the thieves, apparently. Yes, well, I, I'm I'm quite concerned that whatever substance was inside um, rotted or turned toxic in its age. Um, it, it seems like quite an antique. Um, and and we did we did see this engraving on the bottom. You said you said it was French. There was a French engraving, and, and for a perfume bottle, it had a very particular mm. saying on the bottom. Um, uh, for, forgive me, Miss Carter, could you repeat what it said? Um, and I will repeat it in French. I do not speak French, so I will not butcher it. Um, and then I will translate it into English. I capture you with your name and bind you with fire. Ixlala? Ixilala? This this final word is not French. No, no. It's a name of some sort. Do you do you know it, sir Sir John? It's it's not, not one I'm familiar with, no. No. But yes, I too always assumed it was a name and uh Yes, refrain well, from if, saying it if there is um so john wallace i don't mean to accuse you of anything but if there's anything that you're not saying it, it, there there is someone who was in your care that is dead now it would be best to know everything about this bottle possible as i suspect whatever its contents were are potentially what killed him well and I can put on some charm if I need to to get him to open up. Oh, give me a charm. Let's see how well you can do this charming here. He looks you sort of up and down. Yes, so, so my, my charm in this situation, I wouldn't necessarily be charming in like a seductive or attractive way, but oh, yeah. a charm in like a genuine, um, like a genuine curiosity, like a genuine, like, this is something I care about. This is oh, someone the... you care about. Don't you care about that? Oh, yeah, yeah. The charm um, covers all, all yes. manners of like, yeah. It's going for I the failed. friendly. <laughs> I failed! I have a 7-5 and I failed! <laughs> no! It is... So John's got this, this general affable demeanour to him. It just... But he... It doesn't seem... Particularly responding to Lottie's sort of... Line of... Sort of inquiry, line of persuasion. Um... See his eyes sort of flicker back and forth between the three of you and flicker every now and again to the window where the fog's sort of pressing up against it. Look, Uncle John. It, yes. 
obviously this was something valuable to the person who harmed us. Do you know what was going on? I could have died. You could have, but didn't. Ah, uh, it shows you're made of stern stuff. Which is exactly as I hoped. Ah, uh, you know, we are all in our times occasionally tested, and it is times like this that those with strong character and strong good wits in these situations show their merit. Now, You've shown your merit, and I'm very proud of you. But, uh... Sorry, what was your question? As I said, age, it, it gets to me. Well, no. What's going on, Uncle? Uh, well, it appears from my line of sight that uh, this uh, that Fred uh, attempted to steal from me. And uh, foolishly took her... Uh, more than he bargained for. And uh, perhaps, uh, what's the saying? Uh, no. <laughs> Let the genie out of the bottle. Only in this case, not the genie. So, so you're saying that there was actually something in that bottle, some sort of malevolence? Well, as I said, I never opened it. It was a gift from an old friend. Uh, I believe he was possibly trying to kill me, but... So, not very much of a friend. Who, well, who was this? So you're saying this was cursed? In a manner of speaking, yes. Yes. Well, um... Yes, uh, an old friend, perhaps you could more not reasonably call a rival of some sort these days. Me and him have not seen eye to eye for some time. Well, whoever was interested in having it um, is still out there smelling like it and trying to choke people. So I know you didn't want to get the police involved, but uh, as a detective, I, I really, it is my duty to ensure you that the police will do everything they can to help. Oh. Oh, the police. This is entirely beyond the police's capacity. But how do we reverse the curse, then? If if you're saying that this is cursed, how do we reverse it? Well, I... As I said, I never opened the bottle. I... I assume... Uh, I don't know. We try and get it back into the bottle. I capture you by name and with fire. We're, we're getting a curse back in a bottle. It's well, a you've heard about the curses for, for the the monies. Well, I, I don't... Heard of, yes, believe in is a different story. Well, depending on who you've spoken with, I mean, quite a few people who have um interacted with some of the things from those tombs have met their demise because of the curse well um correlation does not mean causation miss carter i think that we still just have a culprit outside who um perhaps was doused in or or, or experienced some kind of I don't know, perhaps the person who was attacking you was just experiencing some kind of mania from these rotten liquids that were inside this this poison bottle. I, there's a lot of explanations for it that are beyond just some occulty curse that's, that's preposterous. There are more things on heaven and earth that, that are dreamt up in your philosophy. As they say. Well, I, I for one have... Uh, an open mind when it comes to such things like this. That's how I come to know Lady Irene here. Mm -hmm. There are many things that cannot be explained by science alone. And many things I've encountered in my travels and in, in my readings. And, uh, but I, like yourself, was uh, once uh, a scientifically minded man. 
well, woman in your case. But uh, it took it took seeing these things face to face to convince me otherwise. But, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. Well, I'm interested in getting to the bottom of it. I um, I don't want to have the next of kin for um, Mr. Fred here informed without any information about what we've done to capture whoever's responsible. Indeed. Whoever. Or whatever. Hmm. Well, right, well, Uncle, you seem to be emphasizing whatever. Do you have any books on this that would help? If I, it is a whatever. I have I have many books. None of them seem to cover this bottle this thing in particular um i was uh, well i think lady irene had the right idea earlier she was talking about the inscription we need to figure out how to seal this entity back in to the bottle, perhaps? Hmm. Interesting. That's going to require research. Thankfully, Miss Martha here is schooled in research. Well, my library is at your disposal. Um, I should just, I'm just going to go and check on young James. He seemed quite shaken by all this. Uh, he never quite got over the fire we had a few years back. Um, oh, discussion for another day. Nothing to do with this. Uh, accident with books. All right, well... I will go along with the research about putting things back in bottles, I suppose. Tap. 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 He heads back out of the room. Clearly the fire was something of import. We might need to figure that out. Hopefully it wasn't another library set fire. Library? Did he have a library set fire? He just these? said it had something to do with books. I'm I don't know. I've I've only been here for a few weeks. Let's move to the library. Um I will turn up the gas lights in the library as we enter. And is there a fireplace in the library? Yes, there is. There's a fireplace, there's gas lamps. It's can be brightly lit and very warm. I will make sure that the fire is warm. If I have to, I'll go back into the dining room and take some of the coals to start the fire. No, yeah, you get get a nice big big fire going in the hearth. Um yeah, you can see there's the boarded up window and the the other windows, the fog's still thick outside. I will start researching. I'll look through the books and see what I can find. What are you looking for? I am looking for any of the books that I may have come across that dealt with curses and undoing curses. Okay. Give me the classic of the Call of Cthulhu rolls. Give me a library use roll. Now, how does one fumble using a library? Can I can I roll again? Oh no. <laughs> so you as so you 
you're sort of running your hands sort of over the books, sort of taking them down from the shelves. Um, you, you're sort of concentrating now on sort of checking over the spines of the books, checking over, sort of flicking through to the contents, and your path has taken you sort of closer to the front of the house, to the window, and as you sort of set aside another book as not being right, you look up from the page, and then you see it pressed up right against the glass of the window at the front of the house in the fog, pushed right up against the so it, it like you know, you've seen almost like a horrific version of an octopus in in its in its case pressed up against the glass. This mass of translucent tendrils and tentacles taking up the entirety of the glass at the front of the window the window at the front of the house. And I need a sanity roll from you here, Maddie. Uh she screams. <laughs> Scream, but otherwise uh somehow <laughs> Keep it hidden away. Well, together, you back away. <laughs> I go by the fire. Back up to the fire. So, for the rest of you, whilst, whilst um, Maddie was looking over these books, um, what had you been doing before she sort of comes sh screaming her way back towards the fire? I'm still. I'm. I'm pouring over this um, perfume bottle consistently. There, there was engravings beyond just the inscription, right? There was also pictures of like little cherubs and things. I would be trying to find some kind of connection, maybe looking over the books myself, seeing I could see yeah, anything Give, give me a on. library use. Um, yeah, the images on the bottle look to be um, possibly some sort of nymphs rising from a seashell. It's um, very nautically themed. Uh, yes. Yeah. So you just you just sort of open the page on a very interesting page on um, French silverware and it looks like a sketch of. So it looks very similar to this bottle. When you're surprised by this shriek and Maddie comes run, rushing back towards the fire. Good goodness, Miss Carter, are you all right? There is an octopus and outside the window. I, on the window. That, that I, seems rather improbable. <laughs> and then Lottie will walk over to the, the window. Okay. Um, now, sort of up against the bright light, of, so the inside of this room, you can see it lit in the bright light of the room. And I need a sanity roll from you as you in all its glory, less octopus and more this, it's this translucent mass, almost like a hyphae of some strange conglomeration. It's not like any creature you have seen, but you are, it's, it's horrible to look at, but there's probably a rational explanation for this. There's no need to start shrieking and screaming. You are. Yes. Some kind of fog jellyfish, I suppose. <laughs> Oh, well, pollution gets worse and worse these days. <laughs> She'll kind of like knock on the window to try to knock it off. Okay, and you sort of reach at the tap, tap on the window. I, Irene, what are you, what are you doing? Um, Irene was kind of trying to thumb through some books, looking for the name Exala. Give me a library use. That's that's not good. <laughs> and then yeah, nothing coming up in the library no mention uh, of that name that you can find you turn your pages of yet another sort of occult tome for you know, Maddie's shriek and Lottie yeah. stepping up to the window what did you how much vermouth did you drink <laughs> and Fog jellyfish? What what are you talking about? 
no, not a jellyfish. It was an octopus. Somebody put an octopus on the window. Who would put an octopus on the window? I I can't help but go and look at. <laughs> you will look up at your eyes are drawn up, and yeah, it, as as at this point, like um, you can see Lottie is tapping on the glass, and this thing sort of ripples in response to her tapping. This writhing mass sanity roll, please. Yes. This this writhing, roiling mass of tendrils. But you are prepared. Your mind is steeled against the reaches of the other side. And this this must clearly be some baby. Or maybe it's just another cunning hoax. Special effects are getting awfully good these days. Yeah. That 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 is an excellent trick. But for starters, there is no such thing as fog jellyfish. And I don't know of octopuses being thrown against windows being invisible. I thought those things were practically myth. What it's it's not invisible. You can see it. Kind of. Yeah. And octopus can survive outside the water. I don't... This this is a very good trick. Very good trick. I don't, I don't think Miss Everett would be able to do this. Uh... Hmm. Whoever did this is very good. I I have seen quite a lot of things in in my day. Being being a, a spiritual medium, you you deal with hoaxes and things like that all the time, and maybe. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe maybe someone's put something on the window and the fog has accumulated and kind of made it look like this. So you're all you're sort of gathered up, the three of you looking. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm stepped back. I'm closer yeah. to the fire. So yeah, you've stepped back. Irene to the fire has started <laughs> tapping as well. Irene has started tapping at the window and it's like, do you understand and going through Kind of a shtick. Hello. Do you do you understand? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out if this is a hoax or. And it so. doesn't seem to respond to your voice. But every time you tap the window, this thing ripples, and you can, as you tap, you can feel sort of this. It's definitely it's pushing at the window. There is a force on the other side. You can see a few. Sort of, cracks around the side of the window frame starting to form. Um, I am going to the door and I'm going to call for Uncle. We, we Uncle probably... John. And as you back up towards the door, as uh, Irene and Lottie are near the window, there is this almighty splintering noise. As the window pane, the force of this thing pushing in just cracks spreading out through the glass and the window shatters. And whatever was on the other side reaches down towards Lottie and Irene. A disgusting. <laughs> I'm just trying to bat at it. <laughs> I am just going backing. to All right. I am going to scream a bloody scream that will aware alert the entire house um i will not do it for reals though because i don't want to blow anybody's eardrums if you could only blow ours not our audience i've got a sound limiter unfortunately it doesn't save us 
um, so yeah um i think it sounds like a fighting brawl from lottie and a dodge from irene as uh as Maddie screams. As Maddie screams <laughs> yeah. loudly. So, Lottie, you lash out. You don't manage to make contact with anything. There seems to be no substance as this thing lashes down towards you. You can feel this cold clamminess of it against you, but it doesn't manage to get a grip of you. Lady Irene is less fortunate mm -hmm. as the cold tendrils of this thing wrap its way around you. So it's starting to reach into your throat, reach out to choke at you, to uh, cut off your air. You yep. will lose uh, four points of sanity and one hit point for now. So, Maddie screams, Irene's got, what's everyone doing? Um, I'm trying to think of what to do to help, or uh, maybe there are some cast iron clamps, and I can grab a lit log from the fire that I'm standing next yes. to, and bring it over and brandish it at the thing. Yeah, so you, I'm going to ask for a look roll from you, for uh, your... Pulling hot logs from the fire. Lottie, what are you doing? Um, well, I would take the, I would be like, oh, well, I guess if we're certain that this perfume bottle had something inside, then I guess maybe this is it. And she'll, she'll kind of start waving the perfume bottle at the thing and be like, get, get back in, get back in. <laughs> okay, so you try to sort of coax it back into the bottle. Doesn't yes. immediately be seen to be doing anything. But um, as, as you wave this bottle, this tendrilous mass seems to almost shift more towards you and definitely away from Maddie, who is wielding this, this burning log in the tongs. You will take um, two points of damage, Maddie, as like sparks and... You burn your hands on the, the hot end of it and don't manage to quite grab it safely. But the creature... You said two hit points? Yes. The, the thing backs away from the fire and sort of releases Irene gasping oh. onto the floor <laughs> of the library. Yep. Blop, crawl back. <laughs> it's, it's, it's running away, right? It's backing away. It's still very much there. It's still very much... It seems to have back away from Irene and be heading towards Lottie and the bottle. That's real. Um, that's wondering? very real. That's very real. I am going to... Uh... Oh, sorry. You asked what Lottie's doing. What's what Lottie anyone's doing? doing. Okay. Uh, I am going to go through... Um... In, in French, I'm going to recite what I read off the bottle, including the name. <laughs> Okay. As best I can. Ixlala. Ixlala. As you call the name, the thing seems to be... It's tension way, it seems way between you, Lottie, and then definitely towards you. And... So you're saying the name, Lottie has the bottle. Lottie, what are you doing? I just kind of continue on my chase towards it with the bottle, like... I need to either leave or get back in. Come on. <laughs> okay. You're waving the bottle. This is foolish. Re counting. Irene, what are you doing? Uh, as soon as I hear Maddie starting to basically chant what is on the inscription, um, Irene is standing up, kind of shaking herself out, and she is going to start chanting as well in hopes that maybe we can get this thing back in. Okay, so as the two of you um, join this chant, what I'm going to ask is for both of you to make me a power roll, please. Okay. Yeah. Uh, power. Which power. one is that? that is Characteristic. On, that is one of your characteristics. Oh, you. Yeah. Ooh. 
So what's that hard? Just check my power here. Um so for now this thing seems to be like as you chant it doesn't it seems to be resisting fighting a yak against your pole, but you can feel it as this chance of building the air, this thing fighting and struggling against you. As you carry on this chance. I'm keeping going. If I feel that, I'm definitely going to be trying to push it back. I, I'm going to switch it up a little bit. And instead of in French, I'm going to try Egyptian. Okay. That's the thing I know that currently is, is all the rage and has curses <laughs> dealing with it. So I'm going to use Egyptian. So Lottie, you can hear the other two sort of chanting away in in various and tongs. I'm, I'm, moving, I'm moving closer with the fire in the tongs. Yes. Yep. Um, Lottie, what are you doing? Um, I just stay consistent. I've got the perfume bottle, it's open. I've got the cap in one hand and I'm just kind of chasing after it. Okay, so as you're chasing after this thing, this thing reaches down towards you to grasp and grab around you. Are you trying to fight against it? Um, yes. Okay. I'll fight it. I'll see if I can almost try to... Last time I wasn't able to quite feel it or grip it, but now I'll see if I can kind of grasp at it and coax it into the, the bottle. Yeah, give you a fighting brawl here, I think. Oh, that was so close. You don't manage to get a, the grip on it, but it manages to grip, get a grip on you. As, as the chanting continues, this thing rasps its clammy grip around Lottie. Lottie, that's one hit point down. And four points of sanity and another power roll from the other two. Let's see if they've got enough to pull it through this time. Did you say I have to make a sanity roll? Uh, no, you just lose four points of sanity. Oh, As this thing okay. <laughs> is choking and grabbing your air, being cut off. And then... Apparently Egyptian's my, my stick on this And one. then, as fast as it grasps you, this, this hold on you is gone as this roiling, almost semi-visible mass is just to be drawn down into this silver bottle that's held in your hands. And you can feel the metal getting colder and colder under your hands. But Lottie, you can breathe once more. Good. This thing releases you. And the bottle is cold and almost damp feeling in your hands. Did I is see it, gone? it go in? It seems thing? to be in the bottle, at least. Cap it! <laughs> oh, yes, she'll cap it immediately. Cap it, cap it, cap it, cap it. And the bottle is capped. And I am going to put that log back in the fireplace, and then I'm going to go look for some wax. And there this candles around in the dining room's next door. She go look for a candle. Do you all get that brief moment to take a breath? Well, I've never seen anything like that before. No, I haven't either. You you don't understand. And while, while Ma uh, Maddie is out and Sir John is out, you have to understand. I'm a fraud. I'm a fraud. I do this. And I earn money. It, it's a whole fake thing. This, uh, lady, gotta... lady, lady Irene. Lady Irene, you're a medium that lives in a boarding house. I kind of assumed already that it wasn't quite a, a true venture. Otherwise, you'd live in much better so, so, uh, sort of living. Rubbing elbows with rich people. Uh, I, I just, you're fine. I... It'll I okay. did something. I actually did something. Oh. I, I I felt it. Well, yes. What did you, what exactly did you do? I, I was, um, I experienced that choking finally that um, it seemed Miss Marty was uh, experiencing and I, uh, I wasn't quite paying attention. How did you manage to get it in the bottle? We, we were chanting the inscription. Yes. Well, the, 
first time didn't seem to do so well, but the second time. Hmm. Rather okay. Oh, well, um, some kind of present from a gift, um, uh, some kind of gift from a friend, I mean. What a terrible gift, don't you think? Yeah, well, he did say it was from a rival, I hmm. think. Yes, well, I'm curious how much of the rest of his collection may pose some kind of danger like this. Uh, Especially with his wariness of the police, I, we, we have to do something about this. This is not safe. Uh, I think we should seal it and then bury it in cobblestone and somewhere. And I come back with the candle. Yes. So at this point, uh, Maddie re-enters with a candle. Let's, let's seal it with the, the wax, at least so that the lid... The, the stopper does not come off easily. We br br bring it here and I'm going to hold the candle in near the fire so that the wax starts to melt and starts to drip. And then as it's melting and dripping, I'm dripping it over the um, the seal of, of the bottle. Yeah, so you've got this wax seal around this bottle. It still feels cold to the touch, but it seems less clammy than when um, Lottie first held it. And as you get the wax sort of sealed around the bottle, you hear the tap, tap, tap of Sir John's cane. Followed by the... Very good. Very good indeed. You does Irene get the sense that he he basically did this on purpose with with the clapping and everything? If you'd like to make me a psychology roll, you may. I am doing it. If not, you may leave it entirely to player intuition. It is was entirely in the hands of player intuition. What do you mean, very good? This is not very good. Well, it's back in the bottle, isn't it? The and... bottle shouldn't have been easily accessible, and it should have been sealed properly. But regardless of that... It was locked in a glass case. Very securely locked. I'm going to have to get the glaziers in, in here. He says, looking around at the, the sea of broken glass from the two windows and, and, the, and the case. Now, yeah, it was locked away, firmly out of the way of prying hands and meddling people. Mr. Wallace, do you have anything else that might pose such a great threat as this locked away? Oh. I mean, it, it yes. must be confiscated. Yes, so you knew that this danger was lurking in your house and you invited people over? Well, I didn't invite them to help themselves to my collection. I keep a hold of various items that could be uh, dangerous if they fell into the wrong hands. Many of them I don't like this. I don't know exactly what they do, but it's safer they stay sealed away. Um, where I know where they are. Is that why you wanted my aunt's book? Did it have some kind of nefarious undertext to it? Possibly. I never, in my own, yes. I suspect that's also why whoever had her killed wanted it. There are dangerous people in this world who will do many things to get their hands on such artifacts, such as uh, sojourning the, a man's footman. Promises of money. Hmm. No promise to pay since he opened the bottle. Hmm. No, foolish man. But probably thought it contained perfume or something. But, uh, well, I, that's it, not a it bad looks like a perfume bottle. <laughs> yeah. 
and oh. it was on display. Glasses breakable. This, this, if it's not safe for people to be able to access and possibly use, it needs to be locked in a box. I shall place it in my safe. I did not realize it was quite that dangerous. Yes, well, I, 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 I am not allowed to confiscate your items for I don't know what holds what power and uh, please be safe I, with anything. That I will ensure it is locked away more securely in future. But now do you understand why I, I was loath to call the police in this matter? Yes. More, more people could have died. Well, if I'd called the police, they may have done. They tend to not be open-minded enough to deal with such situations. Luckily, uh, you ladies proved more than capable. Whatever it was is back in the bottle, and you are all alive, and seem to have kept your wits about you. Yes, we have. I suppose. Oh, I think we should call it a night soon. <laughs> Most definitely. Not quite the end of the party I had in mind. And no. But, uh, and, and I'm, 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 I'm s sorry that it went this way, but I am also glad to have uh, met you, uh, detective. And, uh, I... Yes, glad to be of service. Yes, uh, Maddie, I hope you will forgive uh, the, the, the end to your greeting party. But... And Irene, I trust this will not be the last we talk of such matters. As I said, there are this is not this bottle is probably is not the only th thing in this line that is circulating in London. Of, of course, Sir John. And I do appreciate meeting your meeting your niece, and I believe I've made some fair friends in this process. Yes, well, friends forged in fire and all that. But uh, yes, you should probably, I will call, a, I will get a poor James to call you a handsome to take you home. And you too, detective. Yes, thank you. And, uh, I forgot what else I was going to say. Ah, oh, yes, uh, age, age, it really gets to you, but uh, be careful out there. As I said, not all who dabble in such matters seek to lock them away in cases. Understood. Yes. But, uh, well, yes, I will, I will call you a cap and, uh, ladies? I shall bid you a good evening. And the tap, evening. tap, tap, Sir John departs. He really does need taken care of, doesn't he? Yes. Indeed. And mm. I might be meaning it in a different way than you, Miss Martha. Yes, well, um, while you are living in this home, I assume that it will be safer going forward. But if you ever need me, I'm um, found at the boarding house downtown, or, or, or you can find me um, with uh, the Miller Agency detectives. Uh, I will, um, out of the little uh, pouch that I have at my waist, I will pull out um, a business card and pass it to, to Lottie. This uh, is my information should you uh, need to speak with me. Oh, a business card. I haven't gotten these yet. <laughs> I'm still a bit too much of a fledgling. Thank you. I appreciate it. 
And Irene does hold out her own business card to to oh. Martha. I see everyone has business cards. Um, Thank you. I'll work on that. <laughs> when, when you when you get established, it's it's proper. Yes, Detective Lottie. Oh, well, thank you. I'm sure I'll be seeing you around, Irene, wherever I may see you. And she'll kind of wink awkwardly. <laughs> I guess James. James, I will go and look for James and have him clean up before I retire to my room. Yes. <laughs> and so poor James, having called a handsome two handsomes actually to take uh, Lottie and Irene back to the same house following these two handsome carriages following each other through the foggy streets of London um as the two of you as you ride back through London you see the shifting fog outside although you don't see anything moving in it it's definitely unnerving it's just Every now and again, you think you almost see something out there. But maybe it was just your imagination. Can't be more than one of these things out there, surely. But Maddie arranges the clean up and eventually makes her own way to her bed. And as the night draws to its end, that brings to an end the first session of the London Esoteric Society. <laughs>